Good morning Valley Church on this Sunday morning a warm welcome to one and all to our service uh, to our regular members and adherents online just a, a very big welcome to you and to others who are not connected with our church around the world also a very special welcome to you again we've just been amazed at the tremendous reach that our services have been uh, achieving over the last few weeks in this last week uh, Pastor Mal got an email from a lady in Israel who had connected with one of her midweek uh, teachings and uh, just sent an email expressing her appreciation for what we are doing. So warm welcome wherever you are in the world, in your lounge, if you're still in bed. Uh, just so good to be with you uh, on this Sunday morning. And this is a very, very special Sunday because it is also Mother's Day. And to all the mothers out there, I want to give a special, special welcome and just pray God's richest blessing over you on this very, very special day. Mothers are very close to my heart. I lost my father when I was in my early teens. And so my mother played a very, very important role in the very formative years of my life. And so I'm very appreciative of that. And in this season that we've been in, with lockdown, I know that mothers have really had to step up to the plate. They've had their husbands and fathers invading their space, working at home, which is a challenge in itself. They've uh, had to become homeschool experts in dealing with their children in lockdown and doing homework and doing schoolwork and all those good things. So I just pray that this will be a very, very special day. Even though it is under difficult circumstances, this Mother day, Mother's Day will be a very special day and it's so wonderful to have Megs uh, and she's going to be taking our service this morning and it's going to be focused very much uh, on mothers this morning. Just a few announcements this morning and uh, just to remind you that there are many in our community who are going through very difficult times at the moment. Uh, Pastor Les was reminding us at our staff meeting that on a weekly basis we are providing 15 food parcels to families associated with our church. And uh, we obviously need finance for that. And if you are able to help, then you could pay some money over and above your tithes and offerings. Pay some money into the church account. Just specify it for the relief uh, fund. And those monies will go to, to help those who are in need. Many people have said over the last few days, what can we do, Grant, to help? And this is one of the ways you can do uh, to help in, in these days. If you are not able to pay into the church fund, then just give uh, Pastor Les a call and maybe you can drop something off with her. And uh, in that way, you can also be part of that. Before I pray for uh, Megs and I pray for our service this morning, I'm just going to be praying for our tithes and our offerings. And uh, a few weeks ago, I preached on the, the topic, it's surrender time. And in that sermon, I made mention of the fact that one of the principles in Scripture is that if we, what, what we hold on to, we will ultimately lose. But what we let go of and what we sow, we will be blessed in so many different ways. And the same applies uh, to our finances. Uh, God's Word is very clear about uh, paying the tenth as a tithe and a love offering to the Lord. And I know in these challenging times, there is a real temptation to, to hold on. But I would really encourage you to take God at His word, to trust Him when He says, test me. If you are faithful in your giving, then I will pour out the floodgates of heaven and I will bless you. And I just encourage you as we just give thanks for the tithe and the offering, uh, to give faithfully, not to Valley Church, but unto the Lord. And, uh, and to see what He will do as He, as he honours you uh, in your faithful giving. So let's give thanks together for our tithes and offerings. And then I'm going to pray for Megs and our service this morning. So Father, we just bless you and we thank you. That you are the Father of lights who gives every good and perfect gift from heaven. And Lord, as we bring our tithes, as we bring our offerings, as we bring our love gifts to you, Lord, we just pray that you would bless them and that you would use them in these days. Thank you, Lord, that you are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. And I pray as our members, as our adherents give faithfully, that Lord, you would bless their sacrifice, you would bless their obedience, and that you would bless them with every good gift 
and perfect gift from above. And so this morning, Lord, I just want to pray for Megs. I want to thank you for the wonderful mother that she has been to our two boys. And Lord, as she just brings your word along with others this morning, I just pray your anointing upon her. And I pray, Lord, that this service, as it goes out to not only mothers, but to each one who would hear it this morning, that you would speak into our hearts and into our lives, and that we would be blessed, encouraged, and challenged today. As I pray all these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Amen. Thanks. So we've got a really exciting lineup, actually, of various people that are contributing to this morning's service. And the first person that I have requested just a contribution from is Catherine Bodmer. So excited to have you, Catherine, to share your testimony with us. Thank you. I remember finding out that Noah was a boy three years ago, and I remember walking out of the fetal assessment centre and processing all of that and, and what that means to have a boy. And, and I remember somewhere in all of that confusion and working out what that looks like for me, um, I remember clearly that God said, I've created you to be a boy mom. And I was like, okay, that's cool. And then I was like, does that mean I'm only ever going to have boys? And we never know. So, and that because kind of that whole thing of you, I've created to, to be a boy mom is something that's really like been a, a theme throughout the whole thing of being Noah's mom. Because boys are boys and Noah goes down slides backwards and climbs up slides. And I can either freak out in that moment or I can just rest in that. I've been created to be a boy mom and it's okay. It's okay to let him climb on the couch or climb something dangerous or just push the boundary a little bit when it comes to doing something that I wouldn't consider safe because I'm a girl. And in those moments, I've always known God's got it. Like God's letting me let him be a boy, which is really, really cool. And another thing with with this whole journey of being a mom to Noah has been like when things go wrong, like when he gets a fever or he gets sick or he's just not manageable because he's just throwing tantrums or it's a hard day. They, I've always gone to Jesus in those moments and been like, what must I do? Because the first time your baby has a fever, like I didn't know what to do. And it's like, do we rush off to the hospital? Do we, do we phone? for an ambulance to come. And in those, in those moments, God, and God has always been faithful to answer, to be like, we could do this. And it's like, it's just given us the wisdom in those moments of how to handle the situation, like what to do, like whether we just need to give him more Nurofen or wait it out or um, give him an extra cuddle, or if we should just be more firm with our discipline. Like there's just always been that wisdom from him and that's just been really really cool of how in this journey of motherhood it's always he's always been there always giving me the wisdom always giving me the right things to do and then when I was thinking all of this over this morning I was like he's able to do that because like he has all those characteristics he's able to nurture us when we need to be held instead of disciplined and he's able to discipline us when we need to be disciplined and he's like like i often thought of god the father but he can also be seen as god the mommy who nurtures us and holds us and sometimes he's got to step back and just let us do that dangerous thing as we step out on a limb knowing that he's got us when we fall he's got us so i think if i were to just sum it all up of being a mom and, and having Jesus walk this with me is knowing that he's always going to walk this journey with me. And that promise of always being that I've been created to be a boy mom is something that I can stand on knowing that Noah's going to do boy things and it's okay. And I can just trust in that, that God's got it. And he'll give my heart the courage to, to let him be a wild boy. And also to know that He'll also just give me the wisdom to, to know when to nurture or say no or, 
or say yes go ahead and do that crazy thing and you know because he's been there and he knows he knows what it's like to have boy children there are one or two things i just love about catherine's testimony and that is just that the reality of the fact that we can walk this journey of motherhood and parenting being supported by none other than our father god and i wonder if um, maybe you've never thought of that um, as being a possibility um, and you've not really known how to go about that but today i'm just inviting you um, as we as we have this beautiful opportunity on mother's day i'm inviting you maybe this is a moment where you want to say father i want to walk this journey with you will you come and help me um, give me wisdom where i need it so let's just take a moment and maybe you can pray this with me father thank you thank you that it was your idea for us to be um, fathers and mothers and and you have the blueprints actually for how that that works so now we come and again we just commit ourselves we surrender ourselves as mothers today and ask father that you would come and walk this journey with us and that in you we would find the amazing amazing wisdom that we need the encouragement that we need in fact solutions to those things that we we haven't a clue about so thank you that we can invite you now to come amen i'm really grateful that you said yes in the midst of the busyness of having two little girls in your family um, and so we're going to hear from her just excited about what nick has to say Good morning, Valley Church. Oh, how I miss church and getting together and worshiping and celebrating together, especially right now, just speaking to you and sharing with you this morning. Um, I was tempted to clean my house and make my hair look better than it does and put on a nice shirt to the end of a long day of mothering. Um, two little people they have just gone to bed but as you can see my house still has lots of work for me to do <laughs> but I just thought you know this this is our life at the moment and this is lockdown I think especially for moms at this point in time things are not perfect and if you are anything like me um, with an organized personality there are definite stretches and challenges in this time but as I've journeyed with God through firstly just through marriage and then as God blessed us with children through motherhood I honestly believe that this very humbling process is something that potentially could draw us closer to God um, there are days that I feel you know really stretched and challenged and where i feel like um all the things i still need to work on <laughs> were displayed in one day um so i have really just been wrestling with god and um really have turned to his word in this time and it's been so refreshing and so good and so earlier in this year Jit and I just decided, um, we used to work through books together as a couple once a week, but we just came back to the Word and realized we don't really need anything more than God's Word. Um, it was written many thousands of years ago, but it is still so applicable. And the Spirit makes it come alive to every new situation and context that we find ourselves in. So we have been working through Romans and there's a specific scripture that I would love to share with you that has challenged me and I've been meditating on it um, throughout the week. And it's, it's just really been so encouraging and challenging at the same time. So it's uh, Romans 4 from verse 1. And it says, speaking of the faith of Abraham, Abraham was, humanly speaking, the founder of our Jewish nation. What did he discover about being made right with God? If his good deeds had made him acceptable to God, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. 
For the scriptures tell us, Abraham believed God, and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. When people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. But people are counted as righteous not because of their work, but because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. And so, this word faith has... I want to say being transformational for me um, reading through this passage because on the one hand, which I think a lot of us are tempted to do often, we feel that, you know, especially for me in those days where I feel like I should have been more patient with my kids, I should have spoken more kindly, I should have, I should have, I should have, and I sit at the end of the day and I just realize anew um just how much work there still is in my heart and how much more I would love to display Jesus to my kids and my husband, but also just anyone around me, how much more I would love to be a light um, in this world. So this scripture says, you know, it's speaking of Abraham, it says, what did he discover about being made right with God? Um, Then later it says, If it was his good deeds that made him acceptable, he would have had something to boast about. But that was not God's way. And I just felt such a challenge in that because I often think, you know, and I even start a day, especially now during lockdown, just going, you know, Lord, please help me. Like today I want to be, I want to be patient. I want to be intentional. I want to be, um, I want to set an example. And all those things are good and I really do desire that, but I think what God has challenged me with is that none of those good things earn a right standing with God for me. The passage continues and it says, um, when people work, their wages are not a gift, but something they have earned. So I feel like sometimes we come to God and we we want to earn our way to being made right with him, to, to standing in front of God at the end of the day and knowing that I'm right, you know, I'm right with God. But it says, but people are counted as righteous, not because of their work, but because of their faith in God, who forgives sinners. I mean, um, because it just says, Abram believed God and God counted him as righteous because of his faith. And this has been absolutely transformational for me because this means that those things that I desire greatly um, to know Jesus more, to reflect him more, whether that's in my marriage, my family, in the country we live in, um, in the coronavirus pandemic and and wanting to help and be his hands and feet. um, Those things are great, but it's my faith in God and my belief in God that sets me right with him that gives me righteousness and that is amazing when we really think about that the issue of faith has challenged me greatly and this is just my last thought I want to leave with you Um, because in those moments that I realize that I am weak it is my faith that says but God is strong in me and in those moments that I know that financially we are struggling it is my faith that says God has always been my provider in those moments where I lack wisdom and have no idea how to handle a situation with my child or a relationship I am in it is my faith that says that God is my counselor and my guide and so ultimately living in this faith is the true reality And I think Megan referred to that on Sunday, just as she was praying for Grant. She said there are two realities, you know, the reality that we see, that we read in the newspaper. But there's a very real reality um, that we live in as children of the light. And may that be an encouragement to you. My daughter this evening, as I... um, as I took her out of the bush, like, mom, pray that prayer over me, the one of the armor of God. And I was praying it over her, you know, the breastplate of righteousness and the helmet of salvation. And I got to the shield of faith and it hit me. I'm like, oh, God, it's our faith that tells the enemy, shoot, I'm ready. 
because it's my faith that also withstands his lies and the things that he tries to send against us. May that encourage you this week. Bye-bye. Who would have thought that Abraham would have been able to bring us so much encouragement? Um, that distinctive quality of faith. I love the way that faith is described as being hopeful when there's no reason to hope. And then believing what God has said and has promised to be true. I couldn't think of two more powerful statements um, and a characteristic that is more powerful in these days that we live. So um, thank you, Mughi. Thank you for bringing that up. And I wonder now if also we could just take a moment where we can almost just look at our heart thermometer in terms of faith and allow God to, to just take our reading, actually, of where we are in our in our faith. Um, maybe faith is something difficult for you. Um, so maybe now is a good time where we just go, Father, thank you. Maybe thank you for a, a gift of faith that you want to give us in terms of our parenting. So let's do that now. So Father, thank you. Thank you that uh, we can come now and lay our lives down again. And thank you that you can give us, as we ask you, like Abraham, a gift of faith to be hopeful when there is no reason to hope and to believe what you say about us and about the world and your promises and, and know that that is what is true. So thank you. Thank you. We just uh, receive that now from you in Jesus' name. So I would like to also just uh, kind of leave with you a, a snippet that um, probably has been one of the largest challenges in my own parenting. But then also as I have begun to just experience God's work in my life, realize that it um, is a gift, a great blessing that over the years he has begun to, to give me and help me to realize. And I'm going to take us to um, also quite an unlikely um, place and that is the pivotal moment in Jesus's life when in obedience he goes to the river Jordan and is baptized by John the Baptist and uh, it's important to realize that this is this is the time when Jesus had not yet entered into public ministry he had not yet preached the sermons he had not yet healed the sick. Um, his ministry was still ahead of him. So he goes down into the water and um, the account in the New Testament says, as Jesus came up out of the water, he saw the heavens splitting apart and the Holy Spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice from heaven said, you are my dearly loved son. And you bring me great joy. What a moment that was. As I think about it, and I think about how that place of knowing that you belong. You are God's beloved son or daughter. And hearing those words of affirmation that you bring your father great joy. Think about how many times as parents, um, particularly, and I know for me as a mom, often my parenting was about uh, seeking some kind of approval from God or some kind of affirmation of, yes, I'm doing a good job. I'm doing this and I'm doing this. So um, I'm, this is a, I'm sacrificing this and sacrificing this. So this must be a good job. And I just think about how back to front that is actually when we look at the life of of Jesus and we look at the the affirmation that the father speaks even before anything in his ministry is accomplished and I wonder if you are in that place where you know that you are loved by your father in heaven and whether you understand and know in that critical place in your heart 
and you bring him much joy. Or whether that is always attached to how much uh, you are doing and achieving and performing um, as a parent. And so I know that this is a deep thing, but I, I feel like it's such a critical thing that we come into our parenting and into our lives with the understanding that we are loved and we bring Father joy. So I wonder if this could also be a time where we just lay that down before him, that critical thing of identity. Where are we finding our, the security and where are we finding our identity? Is it in, in who we, whose we are and who we are? Or is it in what we do as parents? So let's come. Let's just take this time to lay this down again and, and ask, ask the Father to show us. So Father, we thank you. We thank you for your Holy Spirit who shows us these things and, and brings light into places that are, that are maybe not as you would have them in our lives. So we lay down again this thing of, of knowing that you love us and being secure in that. If we have sought our, our need for affirmation and in accomplishments, Lord, we lay that down before you. And then we receive, we receive that beautiful thing of, of just the knowledge that we are loved by you. And that we belong to you as, as daughters. So thank you that for each person listening to this, that you would come now in the, these moments. And if we don't know that you, that you would graciously help us to connect with you. To lay down our lives and surrender to you and then come to know you as our heavenly father and come to know just how much you love us and then thank you also that you today will just encounter us with how much it is that you delight in us and how much joy we bring you thank you for rich encounters for the moms who are listening to this of your of your delight and your joy So we're going to close off with a, uh, a beautiful just blessing and prayer. Uh, Kathy and Frank have offered to do that for us. And uh, so they will pray us out with, with uh, a special blessing and prayer over you as moms. God bless you. Hey, Valley, Happy Mother's Day um, from Kath and I. Um, we just want to share a couple of things on our heart just about Mother's Day, actually. And uh, I just I sort of took inspiration, inspiration from Luke 1. Um, where, as you'll know, it's, uh, it's about the story about uh, Zechariah's wife, Elizabeth, and of course, um, Mary and Joseph. And it was all about how God just blessed them and their response. And um, as we know, Mary went and visited Elizabeth, and that's the part where, you know, little John the Baptist in the womb was, you know, jumping with excitement because, uh, you know, Jesus was in Mary's womb as well. And and Elizabeth said a lot of lovely things to Mary, but there's one thing that struck me, uh, which was sort of affirming Mary's response, which um, I wanted to call out. It was in verse 45, where Elizabeth said to Mary, you are blessed because you believed what the Lord said. So I'll say it again. You are blessed because you believed what the Lord said. And that was just sort of honoring her response. And, you know, not only... You know, so God just didn't give her the task of Jesus, who is our Savior um, and, you know, uh, God on earth. But it was also what the two of them were blessed with affected generation after generation after generation. And that's what I just took inspiration from, for them being blessed as moms. Okay. Um, I think I was struck by um, the fact that, that mothering is such a gift, a gift from God. Um, I think in the same in what Frank was saying that that gift um, was received so beautifully and so full in such a full of faith way by Mary and um, Elizabeth, but I was struck by the the gift of mothering like across the spectrum of the ladies in in Valley Church that mean that's maybe more than just um, you know us mums that sit at the back with the noisy kids. Um, that's. Um, 
I didn't become a mother when I conceived my biological child, Anna, and was pregnant with her and gave birth to her. I became a mother when I held Josh, my adopted little boy, in my arms for the first time. So that kind of got me thinking, I was like, well, what does, when did that mother in me like first happen or when did it come to be? And so if it wasn't when I physically um, bore a child, um, if it was when I was a child was placed in my hands but then that gift wasn't just sort of imparted to me on that day where I had Joshi that that gift was something that was in me already as a as a lady and as a mother um, and so I just had such a sense that God was just wanting to call out that gifting you know like in um, Psalm 139 it talks about how we're knit together in our mother's womb and and we as ladies have um, just the amazing biological ability to to bear children. We have and, they, the, and we know we've seen all the amazing videos about you know um, babies forming in the womb. Like it's it's miraculous and it's in, incredible. But God doesn't just gift us with the physical ability to to mother. He gifts us with. The, the spiritual and the emotional gifting of, of motherhood, which I think spans far more than just um, looking after and nurturing our own children. So I just feel that there's such a, um, that God just wants to call out that, that beautiful gifting in, in ladies this morning on Mother's Day, um, that mothering ability, which um, is for mothers across the spectrum that I had that beautiful picture of this, this color spectrum, like a wheel of all the spectrum of, of colors. And that, um, that mothering doesn't just look like, um, me with my two kids. It, it's so much broader than that. Um, and that's what I felt like we want to really celebrate this morning and, um, pray and just bless you ladies with this morning. Absolutely. So we we'll just want to pray for you, um, for those, yeah, for you, just the moms open, you know, just maybe just receive this, lift up your hands, do whatever to be in a position of just receiving and maybe, yeah. Get, get your kids or whoever's in the room yeah. with you just to, to pray with they you. Can take, uh, yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, we just, uh, just want to quickly pray for you guys and bless you. Um, yeah, so Father, I just have it on my heart to pray. For all these ladies, I want to pray for a double portion of blessing and grace today and from here on, especially just in the midst of of just maybe having more tasks, more things to juggle, more people to look after. I just pray for a double portion of, of blessing and grace during this time. And I just thank you of how how responsive our ladies are and just and thank you for their hearts. And I just I just thank you that you're the perfect father and that you you just love blessing and honoring your ladies and your mothers. And I just want to pray, Lord God. We just want to thank you for that gift mm -hmm. of, of mothering that you have placed within within each of the ladies in this church, Lord God. And I just want to bless, bless that gifting and just call it out, Father, in whatever spectrum, in whatever sphere of influence um, each of the ladies are in at this time. Lord, we bless the mothers with small children. Father, would you bless them with grace um, in this time of lockdown, Lord God, with their kids. And I pray you would bless and be with, um, we just call out that gifting of motherhood in single ladies, um, mm. ladies who aren't yet married or haven't yet got children, Lord God, that Amen. you would... Um, just allow that gift of mothering to to influence uh, the people around them, Lord God, the people that can, they come into contact with that need comfort, that need encouragement, um, Lord God, and, and for mothers of older children or children that have um, even left home or adults themselves, Father God, show them what mothering looks like in this season for them, Lord God, because it's beautiful in every season and we thank you that you've gifted um, us with it, Lord God. Amen. Amen. Happy Mother's Day. Bless you. Hopefully, mothers get spoiled. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>